one Saturday night I sat in the London, the London Shoreditch, as peanuts cracked, with my tie of skill and my waistcoat undone, and sweating a lot as the house was packed. The bar door swished when the bell was ringing, and pipe smoke curled to the golden dome, and Leo Dryden himself was singing once more the miner's dream of home. Oh, Saturday nights I've seen in plenty, at the Bedford, Collins, South London, Met. And I've laughed and wept since 1920, a brilliant talent I can't forget. But this is the Saturday night tremendous. This is the night of the greatest pan. This is the Saturday night to end us. We say goodbye to the crazy gang. Goodbye, old friends of the great tradition. From the serious thirties of slumps and tears into this age of nuclear fission, you've kept us laughing for thirty years. Bud and Jimmy and Teddy, you've done it. Monsieur, Charles Norton, and you, James Gold, you've ridden a race and you've all of you won it. And you've ended fresh as a two-year-old. Goodbye, old friends. And in skies above you, Harry Tate, George Roby and Wilkie Bard are with us and watching. Like us, they love you. If there's clapping in heaven, they're clapping hard. Goodbye, old friends. And now, Jack Hilton, I give you the greatest toast of all. The toast of a rhymer, for I'm no Milton. But here's to London and Music Hall. Good evening. This is the Victoria Palace Theatre, where tonight we are present at an historic occasion in the world of show business, for we are to see the end of an era, the end of the Crazy Gang. The Crazy Gang, which first appeared on stage in November 1931 at the London Palladium. Nerva, Knox, Norton and Gold, Carolyn Monday, Monsieur Eddie Gray. In June the next year, 1932, they were joined by Flanagan and Allen. Although the gang varies from time to time, for more than 30 years they have crowned their way into the hearts of the British people. They are unique, and through the years the crazy gang has become an institution. It is difficult to believe that after all those years and all those memorable shows, tonight they are to retire. The theatre is packed with distinguished guests to bid them farewell. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's join them and watch the last performance of the crazy gang.
worried, Mr. Riddle. The name is Jimmy. <laughs> I am worried. My wife's expecting a child. Well, that's nothing. She's had one before. Not since I stopped coughing. I went to a... <laughs> I went to a fortune teller yesterday. She said, if a woman in your house can have a baby. If it's a boy, the father's going to drop dead. Oh, and you'd have to run. Oh, great. Right, right, isn't it? Well, on her, she's going to rise. That's nice, isn't it? Congratulations. What for? It's a boy. A boy? Oh, oh, oh we oh, next week's wait. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I could be with you in person to take part in this tribute to the most beloved group of entertainers in Great Britain. I've been a, a fan of the Crazy Gang for many years, and this is their first retirement that I have missed. But this time, I uh, feel quite sure their retirement is final because I bought all their old dresses for my wife, Mary. I'll admit the styles aren't much, but the price was right, and I have to think of my retirement, too. Anyway, the finest tribute I can possibly pay the crazy gang is that I would have laughed at them, even if they were in America competing with me. So good luck to you, Bud, Teddy, Charlie, and both of you Jimmies. And if you decide to retire again, you have my permission to repeat this film. unforeseen. My marvellous troupe are performing pigeons. I would like to mention, ladies and gentlemen, they can see just as well in the dark as they can without a light. Now, first of all, I would like to introduce you to my assistant. That is the wife's son. <laughs> very, very intelligent. Very, very intelligent. Speaks beautiful French. Regardy, regardy. That's foreign for our butcher's hook. <laughs> Un, deux, trois, fumph. <laughs> That's without thinking. <laughs> and what comes after fumph? Fumph for now. <laughs> Excuse me, I want a cough. Oh, thank God. 
Now, whilst these pigeons are performing their marvellous feats of leg of the main with their plates of meat, Monsieur Jack Ansel, la chef de orchestre, no, and these musicianaries, no, will play a few exceptions from their famous opera entitled The Hungarian Raspberry. Now, here, ladies and gentlemen, give me a deal, sir. Here I have about two dozen beautiful pigeons, and one flick from my whip, and they stop walking. Just one flick. <laughs> I think I've got the wrong flicking whip. <laughs> right between the lagoons. <laughs> Somebody know. I'm called a petty pearl. No, no, Walker, just a petty pearl. Have either then. Have either then. Well, I carry on a bit then, go on. Somebody know, I'm called a petty. Have either then, have either then. That's foreign for Fermi Laporte. Here, let them stretch their legs. Let them have a jolly good flight. That's the jolly idea, doesn't it? <laughs> This is a little chippy, they say, a little chippy. Now, I'll tell you what I want you to do tonight. I want you to do one or two jolly good tricks, you understand? First of all, I want you to jump right over my leg, then through the heart. <laughs> now, over the neck first. Hoover! Hoover! Come on, right over. That was beautiful. Now, through the arms, come on. Come on, Hoover! <laughs> what a man, I think it's poo. <laughs> Now, come on a bit higher this time. Hold on, hold on. Here, give me a Bob Martins. Now, come on up, here, come. Come on up. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got you. Here, take that ball away. Don't, don't let him see it, Casey. That's it. Now, where's the dog? Oh, see it. Yes, yes. Now, you sit down here, you see? That's the idea. Now, your next trick, I want you to dive right through this hook. <laughs> I can stand over there in the hell, about eight feet in the jolly hell. I would... It's <laughs> a girl stretching them, coming over there. Now, as soon as I give you the eye, I right through the centre, don't touch the side, run the paddle. You've got nothing to worry about. If you fall, I shall jolly will catch you. Now, all you do is take the time. Now, come along. Hiba! 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 Where's he gone? Where? I thought he was going to kick me. You know what it is, ladies and gentlemen, don't you? He sees you... Good evening. He sees you sitting down, so he thinks you do likewise. I wonder if you'd kindly do me a favour. <laughs> what are you laughing at? What was it? What did I say? What was it? Did I say something to the knuckle? What was it? Tell me. No, really. No, would you kindly help me and the dog? Would you all kindly stand up for just a couple of seconds, everybody, please? Come on, now, everybody, be sport. Just to come. Come on, up. Up, everybody, up. You work better than the dog, I'm not <laughs> Get your money back as you go out. Doesn't 
can understand. Which of the Kali Shah hop it? You can't help laughing, can you? <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I just got a signal from Manchester that they have let loose about a hundred pigeons. And they're all flying on different parts of my atmosphere. So I get the crash out, we only get ready to catch it. Here's the one coming, here he comes, right down there, good boy. Ah, that's a jolly idea, right over that side. Good boy, another one here. Oh, that was beautiful, lovely. Unbelievable, the party! <laughs> Another one right on the left. All right. Oh, beautiful. Oh, hello. Oh, you're swanking, I, because you're on television. Yeah, I know. Your toes are cold. What are you? Where's the Last one on the head. Be careful you don't get a splinter. Hup, hup, hup. Ah. <laughs> here at Lake Tahoe at a place called Harris Club. It is one of the most beautiful places you have ever seen in your entire life and somebody asked me to ask you to tell you if I would say to you what they wanted me to tell to you directly. Now I know that this is your last performance on the English stage and I can only tell you boys that one of the saddest things that I have heard is the fact that you are disbanding and retiring. I used to look forward as much to a visit with the crazy gang as I did to the changing of the guard. And I think it's going to be one of the things sadly missed in the English theater. And I can only tell you, after all these years, that the pinnacle of comedy which you have attained will take many, many years for any of us to climb that summit. Good luck and take very good care of your health, fellas. I'll see you when I come to London. God bless. Gentlemen, I don't know if you're aware of it, but the history of this whole country over the last hundred years or so can be written with songs from the musicals. Unfortunately, that's an institution that has now disappeared. However, we'd like to give you our version of musical. Thank you. <laughs>
you can spoil the old fan of mine that got for his little boy. Well, that was a boy. But now we're fat and forty, it's a skinny, scraggy lot. Jack employs fat principal boys. The pope is out, the court is out, who could back out a song. Have been replaced by those not placed with lumps of bum bum bum. Oh, where? A pair of flashing eyes and a really smashing pair of thighs, thighs, thighs. Oh, where are the boys who can stride with pride? They've never seemed to worry what they weigh. Boys with more to show than Marilyn Monroe, where the boy on the old train. here it's going to be the farewell of the crazy gang and I think all over the world it's going to be a big sorrow however I hope that they'll be back with maybe more some charity show or some some other farewell parties and uh, I thank them as an artist in the entertainment field I thank them for what they've given me and so many other of us the single song I did in the last show. So gentlemen, you may whistle the second chorus to your heart's content. Ladies, you may hum. It is warm tonight, isn't it? <laughs> Strong. 
I'm talking about the other old people. <laughs> Working with him is like making a horror film. <laughs> Coughing and spluttering. Every five minutes I've got to go somewhere. It gets on your nerves, you know. <laughs> and it is about time. Charlie Norton did a command performance for King Alfred. <laughs> and the more you work with him, the more you grow like him. And I'm ignorant enough. Tonight we were talking about great musicians like Mozart, Chopin, Beethoven and Hutch. And, <laughs> and Jimmy Nervo said, oh, I know Beethoven, I've known him for years. Long before he joined the Temperance Seven. <laughs> said, I saw him yesterday on the 64 bus going to Brixton. How ignorant can a man get the 64 bus going to Shepherd's Bush? And Jimmy Gold, that's the very old decrepit one, the one with rigor mortis. <laughs> he's, he'll be here shortly, he's not too well. He's a hypochondriac. <laughs> and a liberal. No. Yeah. <laughs> if he's got a cough, he takes a pill. If he's got a bad leg, he takes a pill. He's got thousands of pills. We were passing boots of chemist the other day and I nudged him and said, Jim, chemist. He said, I don't want anything. I said, no, maybe they do. <laughs> and working for Jack Hilton has been murder. Is that right, slaves? Yeah. I said to him last night, Jack, can I have the night off my silver wedding anniversary? He said, if you think I'm standing for that every 25 years, you're mistaken. <laughs> but seriously, now the time has come when we have to say goodbye. We're too old to work. Oh, oh, excuse me. Do you mind if I talk a bit of it? Solomon's, the shop one today. They've had just about <laughs> that. Too old to work. Can't get a license for a betting shop. <laughs> or any other shop. <laughs> we're fitting up. We were in the old Marston March. 200 yards and then we got a lorry. <laughs> You know, some people don't like looking back over the past. They want to forget about the time they got the tea service at the office or the factory. We've got 30-odd glorious years. 
ಮುಂದೆ ಐ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ದಿಸ್ ಯು ನೆವರ್ ನೋ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಗೋನ್ ಬಿ ನಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ from the chair that doesn't know me that's all Jack Hilton does all night yeah here's a song I haven't seen for ages but I can't sing it without Chesney Ches come on
as we've been talking about you and usually the last night of a show in fact the last night of the end of the game the audience are a bit duff they're a bit nostalgic and things like that but tonight you've been wonderful and as you've sat there laughing it's a good thing because psychologically when you laugh you forget all your worries your troubles your tobacco shares everything goes <laughs> you keep laughing till you get outside and try and get a taxi <laughs> You know, yesterday you laughed at Charlie Chaplin, Harold Lloyd. Today it's Harry Seacombe or Norman Wisdom. And who knows, tomorrow it might be Gateskill and Frank Cousins. <laughs> Just all I keep on trying. Just for now, then there's no time for crying. At the pool, when there's a crowd. Watch them smile in a while. They'll be laughing out loud. Let them say, funny fellow, come what may, always play. Punchinello, why the greatest of all epithets? When they say you played it just for laughs. You know, this could be a most wonderful world if people became more friendly. Let me tell you a story. There was an avalanche of snow and it buried people and covered houses. 
The Red Cross came on the scene and they dug the people out and they cleared the snow away from the houses and, and then just across the valley they saw some smoke coming through the snow. They got the bulldozers out and they cleared away 40 feet of snow from all around this house. Then they burst the front door open and rushed inside. And sitting there was a little Jewish fella. And they said, oh good, we're from the Red Cross. And he said, I've already given. <laughs>
you don't want. <laughs> Greek and the loyal Greeks, I return in triumph from my favorite lieutenant, Terminus. Terminus! Terminus! All change, marble archers. <laughs> Tell them what we did to the Romans, so mighty emperor. We, we lost 3-1. What are you talking about? <laughs> I was meandering through the outskirts of Pompeii, and I found this beautiful slave girl in a notch bar. <laughs> in a little village called Polythene. Oh, she's a Polythene bag. <laughs> Where did you two gingers get in here? Oh. You pardon me, we came in on our pass. You mind you don't go out the same way. <laughs> Something about it attracted me. I don't know what it is. You'll find out. What is it you want of me? Don't ask such damn silly questions. <laughs> you leave her alone. She's tired. She's been chained to my chariot since the early hours of the morning. Every time I pull the chain, she blushes. <laughs> she what? Blushes. I don't know what to do. Well, sprinkle and leave overnight. <laughs> Tell me, what is your name, girl? My lord, I am Rybina. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, Rybina for strength. Oh. Oh. My father was a gripper. He's a bit of a gripper too on the quiet. He's got a father's features. And a mother's fixtures. <laughs> now, if I hadn't said features, you wouldn't have got a laugh there. No, I really would <laughs> 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 You don't even say muscles. You have no right to treat me as a slave. I'm the oldest daughter. Oh, I don't I like this. Oh, 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 can't stand this stuff. A bit like Gone with the Wind. <laughs> You had no right to treat me as a slave until this dawn. I was a simple village maiden. Prove it. <laughs> Carrying a Grecian urn. What's a Grecian urn? That's the bubble ain't that dead. From today you are the sole property of the old mighty ruler of Greece. See her! See her! See her. I'll see you in the canteen. Thought <laughs> her might be a part. Certainly. Let's order the Christians to the lions. Go on, the Christians to the lions. Look, I are Get him 
sword of combat with the greatest gladiator in the whole of Greece. Ah, oh, no. Send for Pudding Club Spartacus. <laughs>
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call upon Mr. Jekyll. Ladies and gentlemen, now the big moment's arrived. I, I'm afraid of it. This is a very sad occasion because these boys have just started to make a small profit. <laughs> how, how they think they will now be able to provide for their old age and mine is a mystery. But they can always come back. I'm not a man to bear malice. <laughs> They have worked as a team for a team. I have done nothing that has given me greater pride and pleasure than my association with the Crazy Gang and knowledge that I have played some part in their wonderful story. As you know, the Crazy Gang first began in 1931 under the management of George Black at the London Palladium. Then came the break of the war years and it is just 15 years since I put them back together in together again at this theatre. However, I would like to say that there's one person who should be recognized as having brought these wonderful men together in 1931, and that is my good friend Val Parnell, who is sitting out here. Another person to whom I should like to pay tribute, Kenneth, unfortunately, will be with us tonight as he is in hospital. He has directed all the comedy scenes from the very beginning, and both the gang and myself owe a lot to him. His name is Charlie Henry. <laughs> Here is another one. I think your retiring is an unpardonable offence. And if I had my way, I would have you all drafted and sent on a world's tour from one of your outraged millions, Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd just like you to hear now four tributes that have come from the States. I assure you these are a surprise to the gang. They haven't heard them and neither have I. I'm happy to have this chance to congratulate the royal family of comedy. You know, 30 years ago, Crosby discovered the crazy gang while he was making one of his farewell tours. <laughs> Me, as a native-born Englishman, I am forced to admit the truth. I moved to America because I couldn't take the competition of the crazy gang. I'm glad they never invaded America. If they'd sent the crazy gang instead of General Cornwallis, today the United States would just be another Lions Corner house. <laughs> of course, we have our own crazy gang over here, only we call it Congress. It's hard for me to believe that Jimmy Nervo, Bud Flanagan, Ted Knox, Charlie Naughton, and Jim Gold have been at it for 30 years. Seems more like 60. <laughs> I thought they started out as jesters for Henry VIII. 30 years. Imagine stealing for that long without a visit from Scotland Yard. They should have been politicians. I'll never understand how Lawrence Olivier got knighted, but they didn't. On the other hand, how would it sound? I dubbed thee, sir, crazy gang. I guess it's better this way. I wish I could be with you tonight. There's nothing I'd like better than spending a night in London with you five guys. Well, actually, there is something better, but why go into it now? <laughs> this is your night. Your careers are a wonderful tribute to great personalities, fine comedy material, and the health plan. Good luck, God bless, and thanks for the memories. Hello, everybody. This is your friend, the Red Hot Mama, Sophie Tucker. My dear friend, Bud Flanagan, Jimmy Nervo, Teddy Knox, Charlie Norton, and Jimmy Gold have given so much pleasure and so many laughs to so many millions of people these many years. I am very proud to count these wonderful men among my close friends. It is sad to think of them retiring after 30 years together, and sadder to think that I shall never see the hilarious crazy gang again. The gang has become a household word, and as such will long live in the memories of all who have seen them. To us in the show business, their retirement marks the end of an era. Now when I come to England, 
things will not seem the same without the gang. And when I sing one of these days, I shall also think of the good old days of the crazy gang. And I'll always hope that perhaps one of these days, I shall be privileged to see them again. God bless you all. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to tell you the truth. <laughs> Jack Hilton said that we are one big happy family, just like workers in Ford's factory. <laughs> it has been a wonderful career, let us put it that way, 32 years nearly, when we've been together, all of us, and we've enjoyed every minute of it. And the laughs backstage with poor little Charlie being the butt, it's been something that has stopped the board. <laughs> John Gilgood, a great man, once said, long runs are nightmares. They must be for actors who have to stick to scripts and things, but not for us. We have had our fun backstage, which you haven't seen and you couldn't see because the censor wouldn't pass it. <laughs> But it's permeated into our work on the stage. And for 30 odd years, we have been really, not only performers together, but pals. There's no doubt about it. Whenever we've been, say, back to loser, we've always gone to Jimmy Gold to borrow a bit. <laughs> and outside of a 10% interest, he hasn't quivered or quavered. <laughs> and the boys, all of us, bless them, we love them. And I would also like to say, and pay tribute to that man, Val Parnell, he, it was his brainchild that started the crazy gang way back in 1931. <laughs> you probably have read my book, if you haven't, the girls with the collecting boxes have got a copy. <laughs> and in it I state about Val, but I've given the credit to George Black. And I'm sorry that that was a misprint of the publishers. The credit should have gone to Val. And thank you all, you've been wonderful, and it's so grand to see all our old pals of all the years, and my new partner, Flanagan and Solomons, <laughs> sitting there, and it's really a treat. And my dear little missus, bless her, there she is. Thank you. And look, all I can say is, Thank you very, very much. Well, all I can say is simply this, that collectively we may be retiring, but individually we're not really retiring. Jim and I will never retire, I hope. We've got our own little businesses. Bud's got his betting shop with Jack. Jimmy got a boat that he plies on the Thames. <laughs> I've got a bookmaking business, Thomas Tenney and Co, Cotton Garden 3111. <laughs> In case you don't know. And so, what? But... He's got a board in hell. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, it is not goodbye, it is simply adieu, Jim. No, no, no. Sure <laughs> It's the club I have forgotten we could speak the wrong. It's very... It, it, it's very hard for the mid thing and, and try to look for the words don't come and should come. <laughs> they, they sure as I haven't been on the street for 20 years, those who fly and get fun, get fun. <laughs> but serious, ladies and gentlemen, there's so many people to thank, so I can't go through everyone. So from the bottom to the top, thank everyone and God bless. <laughs>